ಶಾಂತಾಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವಂಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣುರ್ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ವಸುದೇವಸುತಂದೇವ ಕಂಸಚಾಣೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ನ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ದ ಗೀತಾ ಧ್ಯಾನ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೈನ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸ್ ಎಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಓಂ ಪಾರ್ಥಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣೇನ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣೀ ಭಗವತೀ ಅಷ್ಟಾದಶಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಧಾಮಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತೇ ವ್ಯಾಸ ವಿಶಾಲ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಫುಲ್ಲಾರವಿಂದಾಯದ ಪತ್ರನೇತ್ರ ಏನ ಭಾರತತೈಲಪೂರ್ಣ ಪ್ರಜ್ವಾಲಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಮಯ ಪ್ರದೀಪ ಪ್ರಪನ್ನ ಪಾರಿಜಾತೇತ್ರೈಕಪಾಣೇ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮುದ್ರಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಗೀತಾಮೃತದುಹೇ ನಮಃ ಸರ್ವೋಪನಿಷದೋ ಗಾವೋ ದೋಗ್ಧ ಗೋಪಾಲನಂದನ ಪಾರ್ಥೋ ವತ್ಸುಧೀರ್ ಭೋಕ್ತ ದುಗ್ಧ ಗೀತಾಮೃತ ಮಹದ್ ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ದೇವ ಕಂಸಚಾಣೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಭೀಷ್ಮ್ರೋಣತಟ ಜಯದ್ರಥ ಜಲಾಗಾಂಧಾರ ನೀಲೋಪಲ ಶಲ್ಯಗ್ರಾಹವತಿ ಕೃಪೇಣ ವಹನಿ ಕರ್ಣೇನ ವೇಲಾಕುಲ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮಿಕರ್ಣಘೋರಮಕರ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನಾವರ್ತಿ ಸೋತ್ತೀರ್ಣಾ ಖಲು ಪಾಂಡವೈಹ್ರಣನದಿ ಕೈವರ್ತಗ ಕೇಶವ ಪಾರಾಶರ್ಯವಚ ಸರೋಜ ಮಮಲ ಗೀತಾಥಗಂಡೋತ್ಕಡ ನಾನಾಖ್ಯಾನಕ ಕೇಸರ ಹರಿಕಥಾ ಸಂಬೋಧನಾ ಬೋಧಿ ಲೋಕೆ ಸಜ್ಜನ ಷಟ್ಪದೈರಹರ ಪೇಪೀಯಮಾನ ಮುದ ಭೂಯಾದ್ ಭಾರತ ಪಂಕಜಂ ಕಲಿಮಲ ಪ್ರಧ್ವಂಸಿ ನ ಶ್ರೇಯಸೆ ಮೂಕಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗುಂ ಲಂಘಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಕೃಪಾತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಪರಮಂದ ಮಾಧವ ಎಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರಮರುದಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈಸ್ಸಾಂಗಪದಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈರ್ಘಾಯಂತಿ ಎಂ ಸಾಮಗಾ ಧ್ಯಾನಾವಸ್ಥಿ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸಾ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಎಂ ಯೋಗಿನೋ ಯಾಂ ದಂ ನ ವಿದುಸ್ಸುರಾಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹೂ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಯುವರ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಕೀಪ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಕಂಪಲ್ಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಹೂ ಹೂ ಹೂಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ uh it means good they can keep their videos on because i like to see faces otherwise also is okay there is no problem at all okay thank you very much for uh, being here we will uh, we'll start uh, the today we'll start bhagavad gita discussion right and uh, today we will have uh, the just introduction only we'll have introduction we will try to discuss something before we start what we are trying to uh uh, uh discuss right so mahabharatam okay mahabharatam is the biggest epic ever in the world even much much bigger than even odyssey or that all that it is much much bigger than that it is a very big about more than a lakh verses are there in this so and uh, this <coughs> there is a saying in mahabharatam ye dihasti tad anyatra okay yenne hasti na tat kvachit what does that mean ye dihasti tad anyatra you might find 
what that whatever is there in mahabharata outside okay you might find this outside ennehasti natat kwachit that which is not there in this mahabharata you won't find this outside so what does that mean any situations or any conditions that is there outside you will find it in mahabharata that means everything is covered in mahabharata that is what it means so mahabharata is something where all the situations all types of characters all types of people everything is clearly explained in mahabharata so that is the greatness of mahabharata so you can imagine the author you can imagine vedavyasa how great he has he has to he has seen all types of minds he has seen all types of situations so that is the greatness of sri vedavyasa so edihasti tad anyatra ennehasti natat kochit that is the greatness of mahabharata and uh, srimad bhagavad gita sits in the middle of mahabharata it is in the middle of mahabharatam in bhishma parvam okay bhishma parvam in 6th uh, kanto 6th kanto and uh, between uh, the chapters are just these are all some technical matters which we can note down or this is just like that 23 to 40 chapters 23 to 40 or 25 to 42 so both versions are there 22nd 23 to 40 or 25 to 42 18 chapters maha shrimad bhagavad gita is in 18 chapters and uh, about 700 verses are there about 700 verses is shrimad bhagavad gita now just a small background about this bhagavad gita how it happened etc everyone knows about this war between pandavas and kauravas so between pandavas and kauravas the war started the war started for that land everyone knows about it <laughs> and in that war on the 10th day see every day sanjaya was giving some explanation or the description about uh, whatever is happened you know this this happened that happened etc he used to discuss with uh, dhritarashtra so he he can see the vedavyasa has given a gnana drishti to sanjaya and sanjaya used to come and then describe so in brief and uh, dhritarashtra was happily listening to all this but on the 10th day when the bhishmacharya fell when the bhishmacharya fell then dhritarashtra got disturbed thoroughly he got disturbed and uh, he he says sanjaya now i want to know the whole story till the time he was okay you know little bit whatever he was listening in brief whatever he was listening he was okay but the moment he heard that the whole Uh, sorry bhishmacharya had fallen down he wanted to know everything so sanjaya he is describing right from the beginning right from the beginning he is explaining when not live not live not at that time whatever is happening sanjaya is describing sanjaya is describing on the 10th day starting from the first day this is how the explanation or the description of that war sanjaya starts and in the beginning only shrimad bhagavad gita is there so bhagavad gita is told by sanjaya okay on the 10th day describing the previous events so we should know how how this this is happening it is not that on the first day it is happening and sanjaya is describing it's not like that on the 10th day he is starting from the first day he is explaining the whatever happened and then that in that explanation shrimad bhagavad gita also comes into the picture right shri vedavyasa who is vedavyasa vedavyasa is the son of uh, matsya gandhi and saint parashara so the saint parashara and he was uh, he 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 was uh, going in a boat and then matsya gandhi he he said that this is the auspicious time and uh, that's it that is how vedavyasa is born to matsya gandhi matsya gandhi was Matsya Gandhi is a uh, uh, 
what is that uh, what woman she she you know the fish and all fish uh, what there is a word and you know, i forgot okay mommy uh, sorry yeah so uh, matsya gandhi and parashara vedavyasa is vedavyasa is uh, their son he what all things vedavyasa did fisher woman she is a fisher woman so vedavyasa classified vedas he classified the whole vedas so vedas is one vedas there is there was no there is no classification veda means vedas which was classified by vedavyasa for the benefit of the humanity he classified into rigveda ajurveda samaveda and adharva veda he classified the vedas into four and he wrote brahma sutram he wrote brahma sutram 555 verses of uh, brahma sutram small sutras 555 then he wrote 18 puranas 18 puranas he wrote including shrimad bhagavata purana which was the 18th and also he wrote mahabharata he wrote mahabharata which is also called fifth veda okay it's called fifth veda panchama vedam mahabharata is also called panchama vedam so this is the little bit of uh, veda vyasa then geeta shrima bhagavad geeta is in this in the in the uh, initial the dhyana shlokam there is one there is one beautiful word mm, sarvopanishad sarvopanishado gavo dogdha gopalanandana dogdha who is the dogdha gopalananda this is bhagavad gita is milked milked out of upanishads so it is the total upanishad saram it is upanishad saram you know after every chapter at the end of every chapter what we say it is shrimad bhagavad gita su upanishad su right so it is upanishad itself so it is milked out of upanishad so what do we know about shrimad bhagavad gita now is that there is no difference between shrimad bhagavad gita and upanishad both are same absolutely same there is no difference shrimad bhagavad gita su upanishad su brahma vidyayam brahma vidyayam yoga shastre right brahma vidya it is a brahma vidya or it's called atma vidya it's called atma vidya so brahma vidya atma vidya so these are the two things which we have to remember shrimad bhagavad gita is no different from upanishad right it is upanishad then next point is we should know what is upanishad 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 so this upanishad has come from sad dhatu this sad has got three meanings generally okay three meanings one is visharanam see all this now i have noted down that is why i am saying all this otherwise i i don't remember just like that visharanam means scattering scattered means suppose you got a glass and then you throw it so what will happen it will get scattered right it will broke it will break and it will scattered all over like that that is visharanam saddadu meaning okay what is this that is scattering and uh, which is getting destroyed visharanam what is getting uh, visharanam avidya kama karma avidya kama karma avidya means ignorance kama desire karma which comes out of desire right so from ignorance ignorance leads to desire desire leads to karma this is broken this is getting scattered how by upani by this upanishad by this vedas by this knowledge another meaning is gati 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 means path or uh, you can say reaching there right reaching arriving etc that is another word meaning of sat where where we will reach we will reach brahmam 
we will reach that satchitananda swarupam we will realize satchitananda swarupam that is what it means brahmam that is second meaning of uh, this saddhadu third one avasadanam avasadanam means destroy destroyed that is nashikal this is a complete destruction destruction of what destruction of samsara dukkham that is the sorrows of this world or in life one who feels they are sad okay one who thinks they are unhappy suppose somebody says i am happy i have absolutely no problem i am fantastic all the time i am happy there was never a disturbance in my mind if somebody says that that means he does not need upanishad he does not need bhagavad gita he does not need brahma vidya at all this is only for people who thinks who thinks that they are having some disturbance in the mind they are unhappy about something something they are not able to get to something they are not able to realize in themselves only those people only those people will know that there is a way out of it only this is for them okay see there are so many people ignorant people are there then that is like like we all we all are ignorant of brahmam we don't know exactly what is brahmam we don't know what is this god where is this god we don't know but we know that it is there that is ignorant people but there are others ignorant of the ignorance okay they are ignorant of the ignorance they them they don't know that they are ignorant they themselves don't know that they think they think that this is life this is life that is sometimes jumping with joy when they get some ice cream and then going to sorrow when they lose something some money a something some money gave little bit more into the auto rickshaw driver oh this guy is a cheat he took 50 rupees extra from me sorrow immediately starts like this so this is the disturbance of the mind immediately on the some little bit of they get okay immediately they are happy so this fluctuation of the mind from jumping with joy and then going to sorrow and they think this is life <laughs> they are called ignorant of the ignorance so this is totally destroyed that is what upanishad another meaning is simple meaning everyone knows it upanishad means by sitting close to a guru and learning it from a rishi the shishya or the disciple they sit very close to the guru and they learn this so this is upanishad that is called another meaning of upanishad which is very common so this when somebody sits so close so close to the guru then the guru teaches him what he what the upanishad they teaches him the brahma vidya and the guru as well as the teacher both of them they become uh, brahma somebody is uh, mic is on i think can you see yeah. yeah it's okay fine so this is the meaning of upanishad and uh, gita is amritam as we know it is milked out of upanishads veda we explained then what is this veda says veda means simple meaning knowledge right veda means knowledge what is this knowledge the knowledge that knowledge is brahmam that knowledge is paramatma that knowledge is bhagavan that is what veda says and veda itself talks about only brahman actually vedas talk only about brahman only but because of our ignorance or because of our this as i say said avidya kama karma we get into this karma with a desire and get into the trouble we we, we are unable to find that which is there in this veda in this vedas so vedas talks about brahman which we have to know which we have to understand it which we have to intellectually understand it 
initially which we have to understand intellectually and think about it work on it with our intellect not by doing any karma by doing any karma we will not realize this god this we have to be very clear by doing any karma we will not realize this god otherwise shri krishna would have told arjuna okay now go to ganga jal and then do some pujas in the ganges or go to uh, some other place holy place and uh, you come back i even after see gandivam samsade hasta the gandivam was slipping out of his hand is it not the gandivam was slipping and he is his uh, shoshedi you know this his uh, uh, face became dry and the mouth became dry he was totally he was in moham right but krishna what krishna did sri krishna gave him 700 verses of advice and told him to think he didn't say okay stop all this you go to some place do some yaga or yajna or do some puja and come back if he had done that think about it if he had done that again the same thing gandhi even will fall so by doing any karma we will not realize this god we will know this god only by vicharam this is a vichara margam we have to think we have to work where is this god who is this god who am i what is this jagat jeevan jagat ishwara what is this triputi all this we have to work in our intellect so this is a vichara margam the gnanam is by vicharam only then why are we doing karmas why are we doing to the office why am i cooking why am i doing pujas why am i doing chanting mantras we will know it okay that is a suspense for the next classes future classes so then so what is this vichara margam it is called kanakaika mahabuddhi okay kanakaika mahabuddhi or brahmaiva mahabuddhi kanakaika mahabuddhi this is a very uh, this expression is from vedas only okay kanakaika mahabuddhi upanishad what is kanakaika mahabuddhi say suppose you have got say hundreds of ornaments okay hundreds of ornaments think about it think now only starts now not later now you have got a chain you have got a necklace you have got a bangle you have got a ring you have got some no stud everything made of gold all made of gold you have various ornaments this that something big something small something for the child something for the big guy all these ornaments you keep when you have this all these ornaments here okay when you look at it simply when you look at it when you look at simply you will see a necklace then you will see a chain then you will see a bangle then somebody asks what is this you will say this is necklace this is chain this is bangle then somebody teaches you okay that is i understood but what is it the ingredient or what is the base in all this what is the base in all this it's gold is it not whether it is necklace whether it is chain whether it is bangle is it not gold yes the chain is is it in gold yes is the nose stud is made of gold yes everything is made of gold only so what is more real whether gold is more real or is the necklace is gold real if you say necklace is gold necklace is more real okay i'll tell you remove the gold from there if i tell you remove the gold is there a possibility of having a necklace there no but there can be no necklace but gold can be there gold can be there without a necklace is it not suppose you put all this you melt it what will remain it gold will remain necklace is gone you can make from the same gold you can make a chain 
from the same gold you can make another ornament you can make big ornaments small ornament you can make a kiridam for krishna right you can make anything out of it you can make anything out of gold but without gold can we make anything without gold we cannot make anything but there can be there can be various ornaments but cannot be without gold so gold is real the necklace bangle and the ring nose etc are just names and forms nama roopam right nama roopam what is what is the truth the truth is gold is the truth gold only is the truth necklace etc are not the truth they don't have really reality they have they have to depend on gold in other words the cause effect what is the cause gold is the cause what is the effect the effect is the necklace right now suppose you ask okay show me the gold show me the gold you have to show the necklace only this is the gold the same necklace bangle etc is what is gold but you have to see the gold in the necklace see please listen carefully i am saying the same thing repeating again and again so that i can drill it through your heart so the necklace and the chain etc what you see is gold if you can see the gold without without really concentrating on the necklace my practice again and again and again see okay i'll tell you so i'll tell you one other example you take all this uh, chain gold etc to a goldsmith is he going to appreciate uh, the necklace the goldsmith no he will make a bundle and then put it in the common balance and then weigh it total this much weight okay this is your money he gives is it not is he really bothered whether you have got a beautiful this is from this place i got it this is from that jewelers this is from this jewelers he never he never cares for all this his view is only gold only he sees that is called kanakaika mahabuddhi kanakaika mahabuddhi is this this is from chandokya upanishad another example he gives is clay Uddalaka Maharshi he is teaching his son Shwetaketu another example he gives nine examples to explain what is this brahman he explains the second second this is not second there are so many nine out of that i am picking up one or two clay you take pot a clay pot a cup or a brick anything out of that various things are made out of clay right yeah now when you look at a pot when you look at a pot pot is useful of course pot is useful it can carry water right it is big pot small pot small cup you can have tea or coffee etc right clay but what is the base of all this is clay so mrittikeva satyam right mrittikeva satyam only clay is the truth clay is the satyam whereas the names and forms of a pot suppose you see a pot if you can see the clay in the pot without concentrating without giving any importance to the shape and name of that pot that is called uh, seeing the truth in the jada vastu seeing the truth in nama roopam you must see the truth so like this this universe the world that you see the various names and forms that we see here right humans animals plants sun moon air fire galaxies right multiverse everything in this universe that you see here is only names and forms 
that sukshma vastu that thing which is there behind all this or i won't say that itself is expressing itself as all this is brahman is bhagavan is paramatma this is what bhagavatam clearly said brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabdyate it's called brahman you can call it paramatma you can call it ishwara you can call it krishna you can call it devi you can call it rudra you can call whatever you want according to your choice but you must see you means not you we all okay including me we all we must see only god here only that sukshma vastu do we cannot say that something which is i can't see doesn't mean it is not there right there are things which we can't see or which we can't hear but we can't say that it is not there we will explain that in our coming classes etc very clearly we will explain all this right so this is the bhagavan which we have to understand clearly which we have to understand in our intellect first we must convince our intellect convincing the intellect is the most difficult thing okay this process is called the real knowledge that is shravana manana nididhyasana right this is the process what is shravanam listening to the discussion listening to the brahma vidya atma vidya listening what is mananam mananam is reasoning it out convincing it convincing our own intellect right our intellect is the most difficult uh, obstacle in our path because we will never get convinced just like that it needs a lot of madhana is required we have to churn it we have to churn our intellect to convince our intellect first right that is called mananam nididhyasanam is applying it every moment of our life once we have clearly understood this intellectually applying it in our day to day life is what is called nididhyasanam this process shravana manana nididhyasana right through this process we realize bhagavan this is called god realization self realization knowing god brahma vidya atma vidya brahma gnanam all these are same there is no difference between this this is what is being taught in shrimad bhagavad gita by shri krishna to arjuna right <laughs> this is called and this is as i told you bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavad gita is exactly what is told what is in upanishad and in upanishads also there are some few mahavakyas there are mainly four there are plenty of mahavakyas are there out of that four are very prominent and everybody knows it this five this four mahavakyas is called one is prajnanam brahma and aham brahmasmi tattvamasi and ayam atma brahma these are the four mahavakyas which is very popular and everybody know there are so many other mahavakyas sarvam khalvidam brahma ekam eva advitiyam like that there are many 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 mahavakyas but these four are very 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 if we can understand these four mahavakyas there is nothing more to learn there is nothing more to understand if this is understood clearly there is nothing more to learn prajnanam brahma is from those who are academic interest or they can write it down prajnanam brahma is aitreya upanishad from rigveda right prajnanam brahma then aham brahmasmi it from brihadaranyaga upanishad it's in yajurveda then tattvamasi it is from samaveda and uh, uh, ayam atma brahma it is from mandukya upanishad which is from adharva veda so these are the four mahavakyas see in the coming other classes and all we will explain this and that but prajnanam brahma means prajnanam means bodha consciousness right consciousness is brahma aham brahmasmi aham here aham aham means this jivatma right jivatma aham 
is Brahmam. Aham Brahmasmi. My true nature is Brahmam. The Jeevatma or the reflected consciousness, right, which does not have any uh, uh, reflected consciousness depends on consciousness. Okay, reflected consciousness. This reflected consciousness is nothing but consciousness itself. That is Aham Brahmasmi. Tattvamasi, you are that. You, that you think as Jivatma, you are that. You are that what? That what? That is what? Brahman, you are Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, Tattvamasi. So, so the Guru says Tattvamasi, you are that. And the disciple realizes Aham Brahmasmi. Not saying Aham Brahmasmi from morning to evening, every day. It's not Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi is naturally Aham Brahmasmi. That's the state. Me. Okay. This is what it is. So, what are, whatever I am saying. Hello. Yes, sir. I, I removed the previous session, so you might have experienced a bit of thing. Your video got frozen, so I had to remove you and uh, you know I love you again. Yeah. It's okay now. Can you hear now? Yes, perfect, sir. Yes. Yes. You and Thank you. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Don't worry. Nothing has happened. <laughs> <laughs> So this is what it is. Okay. No disturbance of the mind. Power gone. No problem. Internet gone. No problem. Nothing is there. Nothing has happened here. Okay. Be happy. So this is what it is. Aham Brahmasmi is naturally Aham Brahmasmi. <laughs> right. I don't have to. There is no disturbance of the mind. There is nothing. I am happy all the time. Come what may. Something comes. Something goes. No problem. Right. That that sort of naturally I am that is Aham Brahmasmi. So these are the four Mahavakyas. Then <coughs> see Srimad Bhagavad Gita is a moksha shastra. Okay. It's a shastra, it's a moksha shastra. Moksha shastra means it gives you liberation. It gives you understand our self understand God. Self-realization it is called. It's a moksha shastra. It is not a personality development shastra. Or it is not something which can be used for management. That is not the purpose of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Many, many people can get all this from this. Okay. It is, you can have more personality development and uh, many other things you can get out of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. That is okay. That is fine. But that is not the purpose of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is not to boost ego. It is not for somebody to become a, a better scientist or a better engineer or better something. That is not the purpose. If somebody falls into a trap, fine. But that is not the purpose of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita's purpose is moksham. Liberation. What do you mean by liberation? There is absolutely no sorrow. There is absolutely no disturbance of the mind. Or in other words, why there is a disturbance of the mind? The disturbance of the mind is only because of the notion that I am limited. There is some limitation I have imposed on myself. There is some limitation I have thought that I am, I am, I am this small guy. I am this limited. I can't go there. This body, so suppose I want to go to America. Suddenly, I, how can I go? This body cannot reach America, right? Within half an hour, I have, I can't. So like that, I have imposed some limitation on myself. This limitation, this limit, this limited understanding or this limitation is to be brought into a state of unlimited, unlimited condition. Who is unlimited here? God is unlimited. So the purpose of Brahma Vidya is the purpose of Brahma Vidya is from the limited personality with the notion of I and mine. Right? With the notion of I and mine. I am the only one to become a better person. Oh, sorry, to become a better this thing. I must have only this. My wife should be good. My children should be good. Okay. My body should be good. I must make money and I must prosper. This is the limited thinking. 
from this limited thinking it should be unlimited thinking who has got unlimited thinking the god so bringing ourselves from this limited creature to the level of ishwara to the level of god that is god realization that is god realization expanding the mind from this limited thing me and mine from that to that everything is me only there is no other here right there is no other there is no one else here there is only one thing and that is brahmam other than that there is nothing there is only god here nobody else is here so that sort of naturally aham brahmasmi this is what i said when it is there what is there to lose what is there to gain there is nothing to lose or nothing to gain right so that that should be our natural state it's not easy but it's not difficult also it's not easy it's not difficult also both are there why it is not difficult those who are ready to receive will receive this those who are not ready to receive this will not receive this there is no question about it please don't think we are here just like that we are here in this discussion please do not think just like that this has happened with a purpose it is the bhagwan's wish that we are here right it's a god's wish that we are here if once we hear this it is like a seed it is suppose the seed is already uh, put in the the soil it will definitely sprout one day right it may be tomorrow it may be after 15 years or it may be next janma also doesn't matter but it will happen once the seed is put once all the circumstances are matching when there is enough water this temperature etc definitely it will happen. it will sprout so like that this atma vidya this brahma vidya is what is this shrimad bhagavad gita which uh, we are going to discuss in the coming days there is no target there is no that how much we will cover every day or how much we will how many shlokas we will cover there is no target as it takes as we go ahead we will continue to discuss the verses so the sri krishna paramatma here in shrimad bhagavad gita whenever we read any book any book whenever you read whenever we all read shrimad bhagavad gita we should understand that shrimad bhagavad gita whenever krishna says me he is talking as brahman there see shrimad bhagavad gita if you take there is no sri krishna uvacha have you ever seen sri krishna uvacha no it's bhagavan uvacha why he says bhagavan uvacha <coughs> krishna is talking as brahman he is like paramatma he is talking he is not uh, that body which lived for 125 years we should remove that 125 years age krishna we should remove that from our mind whenever we say sri krishna talking discussing bhagavad gita we should see as brahman we should see as god himself is brahman who is there bhagavan says in one of uh, this thing he says that among pandavas i am arjuna among vrishlis i am krishna who is saying krishna himself is saying is it not krishna says i am arjuna among pandavas i am krishna among vrishnis is he crazy or what he is not crazy what he is saying is he is talking as brahman i am there in you i am there in everyone i am i am there ishvara sarva bhutanam hridese arjuna tishthati ishvara sarva bhutanam hridese arjuna tishthati and i am in every one and in me everyone is there what does that mean i am in everyone and he he, he specifically says i am in you also hey arjuna i am in you and i am in krishna the krishna himself is saying i am in krishna i am in you that means haram of a, of a chain you know sutre manigana i am like a thread uh, in a chain of uh, beads i am like a sutram sutram means uh, thread i am like a thread that means i am there in everywhere i am there in me i am there in you i am there in all 
समस्त भूतानि सर्व भूतानि ईश्वर सर्व भूतानि हृदयेशे अर्जुन तिष्ठति दिस ही इज टेलिंग एवरी नाउ एंड देन ही इज टेलिंग इन बिटवीन ही टोल्ड मेनी थिंग्स ओके मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट कर्मा व्हाट इज कर्म योगम व्हाट इज भक्ति योगम व्हाट इज ज्ञान योगम दिस एंड दैट एंड देन हाउ टू कंट्रोल योर सेंस ऑर्गन्स हाउ टू कंट्रोल योर सेंसेस how to control your karma indriyas how what to talk what not to talk what to eat what sort of posture you have to take everything he has explained but every now and then he is giving this this very strong very strong verses are there where he says krishna says that there is nothing other than me right <laughs> vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane gavihastini right uh, sopageja पंडिता समदर्शिना राइट ब्राह्मणे विद्या विनय संपन्ने ब्राह्मणी इन ब्राह्मणन हु इज अ बॉन्ड ब्राह्मिन देन गवि काउ हस्तिनी एलिफेंट एवरीथिंग ही इज चंडालन स्वपागे स्वागे वन हु ईट्स द डॉग मीट इन हिम आल्सो आई एम देयर इन डॉग आल्सो आई एम देयर डॉग ईटर आल्सो आई एम देयर so i am there in everything when krishna says sri krishna says i am there in everything he is not talking as 125 year old lived sri krishna he is talking as bhagavan he is a purna avatar what is purna avatar purna avatar means when he is born himself he is a brahman he is born as brahman before only he decided that i will be born as brahman only that is why he is a purna avatar he never cried krishna never cried anything sri krishna never cried he is smiling all the time even you watch movies you will see that krishna is always smiling he is never cried that is the that is the brahmakyani selection right so bhagavan gives so to the today's the main thing is what we have to understand from today's discussion is that one is shrimad bhagavad gita is a <coughs> moksha shastram which raises the individual level to the level of god like the sun sun rays sun rays are falling on ganga jal also sun rays are falling on the ditch water also for the sun there is no difference between ganga jal right the air the air is available to all good people all bad people all the criminals also the air is available at any point of time vayu bhagavan said that oh no no i will give fresh air to the good people and only little bit bad air polluted air to the criminals that discrimination is not there from the angle of a god so raising the level from that individual of raga dvesham the individual who thinks this is good that is bad this is right that is wrong from that level from that limited thinking to the level of god that is what is brahma vidya that is what is being taught in shrimad bhagavad gita one second thing kanakaika mahabuddhi see gold in all ornaments like that that is only an example like that see god in everything around including this body including this everything is nothing but god see god in everyone see bhagavan in everyone see same like this is all upanishads i am this is not whatever i told today has is nothing is mine everything is from the upanishad everything is from the scriptures only in english language that's all that's all nothing mine everything is from upanishad kanakaika mahabuddhi mrtike eva satyam all these are all upanishads so like that we must see bhagavan or paramatma or brahman in everything around us that is being talked discussed in uh, shrimad bhagavad gita 2 3 <laughs> there is one beautiful verse itite gnana vimrats vimrshaitya dasheshena yadhechasitadha guru itite gnana makhyadam i have explained gnanam to you at the end in the 18th chapter last he says iti te gnana makhyadam i am i have taught you gnanam okay guhyat guhyadaram mama guhyat guhyadaram means secret of the secrets this is the secret of the secrets i have explained to you right then vimrshaitya dasheshana you do your vimrshadi means you uh, 
uh, with a critic eye okay with a critic eye you analyze this whatever i talk to you so far you analyze this with a critic eye critic eye in the sense it's not 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 to say you are wrong or something but you analyze it analyze it and then yadhechasi tatha guru after that yadhechasi tatha guru generally is explained in many that you do whatever you want freedom is given no that is not my meant that it is not that yadhechasi tatha guru yadhechasi tatha guru here means by this knowledge okay by with this knowledge you formulate your life that is what edhecha sitada guru don't do something that don't imitate someone else okay that is the point don't try to imitate somebody else you acquire this knowledge analyze it in you what are the disturbances in your mind what is it that is causing my problem you understand your problem individually and apply this knowledge and then yathecha sitada guru not that you do whatever you want i have taught you uh, by the way he should talk for 700 verses to do whatever you want no he you see he says you are my favorite you are my beloved he says many times hey arjuna you are my you are my beloved and then how can he say that you do whatever you want that's not the point the, the thing is by realization of the truth you your karma you decide how to get over it you have to decide your path yeah that is the point you have to find your path that is a correct phrase you find your path individually we have to find each individual have to find their own path right by this knowledge by this knowledge understand it clearly that is very very important so these are the today's uh, discussions uh, main points today is the introduction we will start with the first verse dharma kshetra kuru kshetra we'll start right from the next class onwards we'll do the shanti mantram and uh, then uh, we can discuss om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate ओम शांति 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 ओम हरि ओम ब्रह्मार्पण